Copium, ladies and gentlemen, is something we all do from time to time. I cope by considering my 1.6 thousand subscribers an actual YouTube channel and continue making videos out into the depths of internet space. But today we're going to be talking about another kind of copium, and that is this interview that one of the former Skyrim devs gave about the Bethesda engine to the videogamer.com. And whatever your opinion is, I know everyone has different opinions on the whole is Bethesda kind of bad now because the creation engine stinks? And people have different opinions. I've had people comment on my videos, no, it's because the creation, it's not, it's their incompetence. The creation engine's fine. The creation engine is bad because the people running and maintaining the engine are incompetent. Whereas other people are very much of the opinion, actually there's a lot of creativity at Bethesda, they're being held back. Now let's be clear, I am a Bethesda fanboy. I am just a Bethesda fanboy that couldn't stand Starfield because I realize the engine needs to go. That's that's kind of my opinion at this point. I'm leaning towards that. Now, I apologize for not being all together today. I am coming down with the flu because it is that time of year when all the students infiltrate Central England and I, I die of the plague. But anyways, on to our story of today. So Bruce Naismith, the lead designer of Skyrim and one of the systems designers for Starfield, uh, spoke, sat down and spoke to a video gamer and talked about the creation engine and its relationship to Bethesda's games of late. And his comments kind of defending the idea that they're sticking with the creation engine and that's just fine actually has made me more convinced of the argument from the people that are saying, no, 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 the engine is the problem. And we'll get into that as we look through the article. Now, they don't go into the detail of the interview in this article, sadly, so I can't tell when this bit that initially raised my concern came up. But the person writing the article put this right up at the forefront. So. He's asked about what are the benefits of moving to a different engine from the creation engine, and he replies, quote, we're arguing about the video game engine. Let's argue about the game. The game engine is not the point. The game engine is in service to the game itself, and you and I could both identify a hundred lousy games that used Unreal. Is it Unreal's fault? No, it's not Unreal's fault. Now, this completely, completely skirts the actual issue that Bethesda fans are raising about the creation engine. You want to talk about the game? Let's talk about the game. Let's talk about the fact that the faces and motion capture in Bethesda games is the same quality it was in Oblivion. That's a fact. It's the same. Look at the faces and the character movements in Oblivion. Look at the ones in Starfield. It's the same. You haven't upgraded it because the engine has limited you in doing so. You want to talk about the, the game? Let's talk about Starfield's loading times. Even on a good SSD like mine, there's a lot of loading and load screens in that game. Why? Because of the way the creation engine caches the cells that need to be moved out of memory and then put back into memory. That's why all the load times. Modern engines like Unreal have ways of getting around that. And, you know, I was hoping, really hoping that the journalist conducting this interview would follow up with some interesting questions about the game in response to him. No, no, this is modern day game journalism. Uh, game creators nowadays might get offended if asked real questions by game journalists. And thank God, game journalists are never going to change that, am I right? But Naismith goes on to uh, continue to allay fears where he says, Gamebryo, so that's the company that made the engine that is used in Oblivion. He says, Gamebryo is no longer a business. It hasn't been for a while, but the engine has been consistently tweaked and updated and refined to do exactly the kind of games that Bethesda makes, the Elder Scrolls, the Fallouts, Starfield. It's perfectly tuned to that kind of game. So he's kind of admitting, yeah, I mean, we are stuck making these kind of games for forever, and the company that makes the engine and knows how to maintain it is out of business, but don't worry. And like I said, Whatever you think about whether it is the engine that is the, the problem for Bethesda at the moment, you got to admit that this attitude is probably not a good one to have in an institution. As somebody who used to be a teacher for years, I know this attitude the minute I see it. It's like, oh, I don't really understand all of the material in the homework, uh, but uh, professor, can I just, no, no, it's it's got that we're, we're making do, right? It's got, mm, mm, no, 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 no. You're not, and people people are noticing. He goes on then to address this question raised by the reporter of whether they should swap to the Unreal Engine, which again, I think is it's kind of not the interesting question to ask. The interesting question to ask first before you ask should they move to Unreal is, is the engine creatively holding them back? Which he says it isn't. 
because according to him, they're going to keep making the fallouts in the Skyrims forever. Now, my opinion is that if they keep making the faults in the Skyrims forever, they're going to be bankrupt within 20 years because Starfield, sure, that could still be okay. But if they release another four or five Starfields over the next 20 years, they're not going to be uh, uh, in business at the scale they are anymore. That's the reality because the game plays like a dated game because it is on an engine that's fundamental architecture is from around 2006, 2007. And his response to this is to go back on what he just previously said about, you know, we need to focus on whether or not the engine is fit for making the games. And he says, I don't know. Now it would cost, you know, a lot of time and money for Bethesda to switch, which goes contrary to what he just said about, well, we really need to think about whether it's in service to making good games. Well, if it is in service, them, them swapping to a new engine, then they should spend the time and the money. God knows it takes Bethesda long enough to make a game anyway. And now he goes on a little bit later in the article to talk about the things that they might benefit. He explains, there are parts of the Gamebryo engine that I would not be surprised to find out that Bethesda can no longer compile because the original source code just doesn't compile anymore. You just gotta use the compiled stuff as it is. But arguing over whether or not you should use this engine or that engine, the engine is in service to the game. Is the game good? I don't care what the engine is. The game's good. Let's play the game, which is just, it's the level of copium. The whole, the whole context of him being asked questions about the engine is the context of the response to Starfield and then the response to Starfield's DLC. And, and I, I think what, what really annoys me is the, the gaming journalism here, because what I would do in that interview is I would then say, well, as a follow-up to that, people are very unhappy with Starfield as a general rule. People were very, very unhappy with the release of 76, which had a load of bugs and issues. People were very unhappy with the release of the latest Starfield DLC. So we already know that people are unhappy with your games. And they don't even do that. I I, I think if, if I'm frustrated, it's not, it's not so much at Bethesda over this. I really feel this interview had was very interesting and had a lot of interesting ways that it could go. And as usual, we're just let down by the, the, the absolute client media obsession that game journalism has. You know, people always criticize like political media for, for fanboying over different sides. And that's certainly true. But I, I feel even a lot of like really hardcore client media in the political space is still not as cringe as just the sycophantism we see in game journalism these days. Because these, the fact that there, there's no discussion, the, the whole context of why people are asking questions about the Bethesda engine, why people are talking about why Bethesda games are bad at the moment is because of the negativity surrounding the games and the reviews lately. A negativity that really just has begun to seethe and grow since the release of Fallout 76, which is a game that I like. I mean, I've been, you know, had bad things said about me for the fact that I, I kind of like Fallout 76. I think it's fun to play with your friends. Anyways, I'll end this video here. This is a short and <coughs> cough phlegm. I hope there's not too much phlegm in the microphone. I apologize if there is. If you enjoy gaming news and commentary, like and subscribe as a gamer. I always like to see that number go up. And until then, I will see you in the next video.